So this is the final video in this lecture set. Um, what we'll be focusing on at this point is the ability for us to click the Add Transaction button uh, after we've selected a bank account and then being able to input the information that we would need to add or input for a transaction. Now to perform that type of functionality uh, we're actually going to have to create a second form. So we're going to right click on our project and say Add and then we're going to choose New Item and we'll get a full list of all kinds of different items that we can add but the item we want is a Windows form and then for a name I'm going to call it the Add Transaction form. So an Add Transaction.cs file is added to our project uh, we end up with another designer for another window and we can do the same by pulling out our toolbox and dragging and dropping items onto the designer surface. Now what I want to focus on is what we need for a transaction. So we're going to be looking at an account transaction object. So I'm actually going to grab this and I want to kind of mount it to the side of our screen here so we can look at both in tandem. So if we collapse this to an outline, we'll zoom in a little bit. We have some basic elements that we need to be able to manage or maintain. Uh, the things that we're looking for is the amount of the transaction, the type of transaction, a description, the bank account associated with the transaction. So we have these four properties that we need to maintain or collect. So on our toolbox, we're going to need to bring in some labels and some buttons and some text boxes in order to facilitate this and maybe a drop down list or two. So we'll start off with the labels. So the first label is going to need to say something to the effect of um, bank account. So this is taking this label, we're going to the properties dialog box, the text value, we're setting it to bank account so that it'll read as bank account. I'll uh, we'll drag another label out here, we'll do some quick alignment, and then we'll say that this is a transaction type. I'll grab another label, bring it out here, and drop it down, and this will be our amount. And then the final label will be for a description. So we now have these four labels. I'm going to actually lasso them, right click, and, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to come up in the toolbar and do align right. So that'll bring them all kind of right aligned to one another. <clears throat> and then we can just come in here and we can grab a combination of labels, drop downs, and text boxes to finish things out. So I feel like the bank account is going to be kind of a preset, so we're not going to need to... Uh, allow them to select that, though it'll be based on which account is currently the selected account from our other form. So if you remember back from that form, uh, form one, they have the bank account drop down. So whichever bank account is selected here, when they click add transaction, that'll be the account that we're adding the transaction to. So we're going to go ahead and give this label um, no text, make it blank and then we'll call this LBL bank account. For the transaction type, I'd like to make that a drop-down combo box. So we'll call this CBO transaction type. The amount will be a text box. So for the properties, we'll call it TXT amount. And then the final text box will be for the description. I'm going to go ahead and make this a multi-line. Um, I do that by clicking the little arrow here, and then it gives me the accelerator pop out, and then I can choose multi-line. It's also available as a property on the uh, properties dialog box for that box if you go to multi-line and set it to true. So there's multiple ways of doing it, but obviously one is a lot more convenient than the other. So we'll just kind of make that a pretty decent size. And then the last thing we'll need is a button to save those changes. So we'll say add transaction.
and we'll give it a BTL add or BTN add will be the name of it and let's just expand this to make it wide enough and I like to make it kind of balanced across the whole form so we're gonna kinda of do that so I'm gonna lasso everything I'm gonna move it up a few pixels I'm using my arrow keys to push this up and then we'll drag up the bottom just kinda of tighten up the form a little bit okay so we now have our form we have all of our major components but we need to kind of set things up and get it ready so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna close my account transaction class I don't need that anymore I'm gonna focus on my form so on form load so I double clicked on the title bar of that form um, there are certain things I need to do. I need to pre-populate my drop-down with transaction types. I need to capture the bank account that kind of prompted this form to open and set up the default values for the amount and or description. So those tasks are capture bank account, set up transaction types, default amount text box, and or description. So I like to always make comment notes to myself just to make sure that I've got my flow correct and I'm, I'm thinking through things the appropriate way. Um, so to capture the bank account, we'll get to that in a moment. I'm actually going to start off by setting up the transactions types because that's the simplest. Uh, so we have our CBO combo box transaction types dot data source. And we're going to set that data source equal to um, the transaction types. which comes from cp underscore week 5 dot models namespace now to do this if we actually do transaction type dot it's going to give us each one of the enum values and what I want is I want both values so there's actually a helper class that exists that's called enum and if you do enum dot you can get things like get name get names get values and these help you kind of treat the treat the enums as more primitive types. So get names, for example, return an array of strings where it takes each enum and parses it into a string. So we can say get names. And in order to pass what is needed, which is the type, we actually can use the type of directive and say the type of transaction type which will give us the type variable and then we can pass that in to get names. So we now have loaded into our data source an array of strings that represents each one of our transaction types. And we'll look at that in a little more detail in a moment. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to capture the bank account. So how do we get the bank account into this form when it lives or resides in the other form? Now each class comes with a constructor. Now the constructor often is the default constructor which you see here on line 16. Uh, nothing is passed in and it simply just initializes in internally whatever it needs to in order to get things functional. Well what we can do is we can require a parameter to be passed in when we go through and actually create this new add transaction form and this form if you remember is a class so we can treat it just like we do bank account or banks or account transaction it is a class and we can use it in other pieces of code which you'll see in a moment so in order for you to create an add transaction form I think we need to require a bank account to be passed in, which means that we then need a private bank account field variable to store that account. So we can say underscore account equals account, underscore account is our private field. Account on the right of the equal sign is simply the parameter that's being passed into this constructor. So in order for this add transaction form to be created, and a bank account variable has to be passed in. So that's a way to ensure that we have an account associated. So we don't actually need to capture the account, but we can update that label with a couple of pieces of information. We can use the account.nickname, 
and then maybe in parentheses we can add the account account number let's get an extra plus sign here so now we have something to present inside of LBO bank account and then finally for txt amount.txt I'm just going to default that to 0, .00, 0 uh, just as a kind of indicator to the user what needs to be typed in there that it's a number and it's a decimal value alright so I'll go ahead and save that so we've now got the basic mechanics of a add transaction form load set up and in place so how do we load this form if we go back to form one our main form we double click on add transaction and we'll remember that that button actually takes us to the menu item which is right below it which currently is prompting with a message box that says add transaction what we want to do instead is we want to capture the bank account and create the add transaction form now the bank account again is coming from the um, <clears throat> the tool strip button combo box so we do that actual work here on line 81 so for now I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that line and we now have the selected account now to load up the add transaction form I'm going to create a new variable called add transaction of type add transaction so the um, there I'll call it transaction form for clarity but it's of type add transaction so add transaction is the name of our form and we'll call this the add transform and we'll set it equal to a new add transaction class now open parenthesis you'll notice here in the IntelliSense that it says that a bank account parameter must be passed and that's because we made the modification to the forms constructor and said we must pass a bank account if we were to ignore that and just do semicolon we'll actually end up getting a compiler error saying that the constructor does not take zero arguments it must have that bank account argument so we'll pass the selected account and now we have a good transaction form or add transaction form that we can then call now there's two ways to show this form we can say add transform dot show and when we call show it makes the form appear but the form appears and it appears as an independent form and I'll show you what I mean so I'm gonna go ahead and hit run and I'm gonna click add transaction and you'll see what happens is that the form shows up and it has the checking account number information it has the drop down for deposit or withdrawal and it has the amount just like we programmed it to do so very good but this form acts independent of the not so quick form. now why is that a problem well I could technically move this form out of the way hit add transaction again and I could get another one and I could do it again and get another one now depending on the functionality you're trying to achieve this could be um, normal could be by design it could be exactly what you want but in some cases you may say well hold on hold on I want them to complete one transaction before they go on to doing another transaction so how do we facilitate that appropriately because right now we have three transaction windows open we could come over here hit exit and the whole thing just closes so that flow does not feel intuitive what I want to have happen is when that add transaction box opens everything else becomes you know put on the brakes you can't touch it until you deal with this dialog box so to do that we're going to say show dialog now by simply calling show dialog versus show it changes the functionality if we click add transaction we still get a pop-up but if we try to go back to the main form we can't you have to dismiss this box before you can do anything else and that dismiss that dismission <laughs> dismissing that box can happen in one of two ways you can add transaction or you can close the bin the window so depending on the approach and how we handle that the rest of our code then you get back to having full control here so we can again exit 
So that's how we get our dialog or get our window to show. Now we've got our window, we can show our window, we can get some information typed in, but then how do we end up ultimately getting that transaction detail passed back to the main form so that we can update the bank account and present the new transaction. So from the add transaction form, what we want to do is we want to do a few additional steps. The first thing is that we want to create an event. We talked about events previously and wiring up for an event and delegates, but we're actually going to create our own event. Now to do that, we need a few things. Um, we need a delegate for the event handler. We need, in our case, some event args or arguments. And these are going to contain the transaction details. And then back on our main form, before we show the dialog box, we want to uh, connect to the event so that when the event occurs, we can handle it and actually add the transaction. <coughs> So, we need to define ourselves an event handler um, delegate and an event. Now, within the .NET framework, there are particular event handlers delegates that already exist. So, this event handler delegate uses that same generics syntax, and you notice that it says delegate system.eventHandler, and it expects t event args. t event args is that um, event args type that is going to be passed to our handler. So you remember here on line 21, I said we need to create some event args or arguments. We need to actually create those first and then we can use this generic event handler to do the work that we need. So I'm going to go ahead and call this our add transaction event args. And then this will be um, this will be the transaction added event. So this will be a public event, event handler, and semicolon. Now we have a red underline here because it doesn't know what this class is, but we also have an accelerator that says, hey, there should be a class here. It doesn't exist. Do you want to generate it? Yes. So that class has now been kind of stubbed out for us. You can see it here in our Solution Explorer, and we also have it here as a tab in our window. So I'm going to go ahead and say this is a public class. Now all event arguments have to inherit from the base class event args. So by doing that inheritance, colon, and the base class name, our add transaction event args now takes on all of the properties and methods and functionality that the event args base class contains. Now we can do our own constructor. And I'm going to do one thing here real fast. I'm going to um, pass in an account transaction as a parameter to our add transaction event args constructor. And the reason I want this is I'm going to create a, a property And this property is going to be of type account transaction. I'm just going to call it transaction. And it has a public get shorthand and a private set shorthand. And what that means is that I can say here transaction equals trans, but from the public side, transaction cannot be manipulated, changed, or set by any outside code. Only within the class can I manipulate or set the transaction property. So from the outside it's basically read only, it's a get only uh, property. So I'm going to go ahead and use this as my event arg. I have to pass in an account transaction into the event arg to construct the object and then it'll have the transaction kind of packaged up for me inside of this transaction property and you'll see how that all kind of works together in a moment. But I now have an event argument. So transaction added is my event. So I now need to hook into this event, and then I'll show you how to call it. So we have transaction added. So from form one, we need to connect to the event. So if we do add transform dot, we'll see that there's a whole set of methods and properties, and these things with lightning bolts, those are events. 
And what we're looking for is we're looking for one called transaction added. And there it is. That's the event that we just created. So if we hit enter and then we can do a plus equals, Visual Studio goes, oh, this is an event. You did a plus equals. Do you want me to create you an event handler for the add transform, add transaction, or transaction added event? Yes. We'll hit tab. It says, okay, there you go. I've now stubbed that out on this line. Would you like me to actually generate the method to be the handler? If we hit tab again, it'll generate a method right below that says add transform underscore transaction added. And you'll notice the parameters are an object of sender and the event args are of type add transaction event args, E. Pretty nice. So we now have more details around what we're going to need to make all of this work. So the last thing that we need to do here is we need to uh, store the new transaction and then update the data grid view. So the transaction, so if we go e dot transaction, there's that transaction property I just talked about. And off that transaction, we have an amount, a bank account, a description, and a transaction type. So we have mostly all the details we need. So from this bank account, we can say bank account dot, this gives us the bank account information. And what we need to do is we need to be able to store this transaction or add this transaction to the bank account. Now that functionality doesn't currently exist because we haven't implemented it inside of our account provider. So what I'll do is I'm going to do a quick kind of a shorthand way of implementing that. What we'll do is we'll do public bank account and we'll say add transaction and we'll pass in an account transaction and we'll call this new trans and then what we're going to do here is actually we're not going to return bank account but we're going to return account transaction array so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say get all transactions for the new trans dot bank account and I'm going to use some notation that you may not be familiar with but I'm going to say var current trans and then what I want to do is I'm going to say current trans dot union I'll say new array of new trans dot to array return. Now, so basically what this is saying, and if you're interested in it more in more detail, you can actually go ahead and look at this up, but we'll get to this um, in later lectures. But what I'm doing here, I'm saying get, get all the current transactions and then take the current collection of transactions and union or join in, add in the new transaction, which will give me a union collection that's I enumerable and then convert that I enumerable to an array so that I can return an array of transactions. So basically that's going to daisy chain the existing transactions with the new transaction and give me back a new collection of all the new transactions. It's not a concrete way. What this really should be is something to the effect of take the new transaction, save it to the database, let's say, and then pull all the transactions for that bank account back out. But instead, because of the way that we're working kind of in this non-committable state, we're just kind of hard coding values and collections, we're going to kind of work in this state for now but we have this method called add transaction. So to store it, we'll say util dot add transaction. So util dot add transaction. And then we'll pass in the new transaction. And then we'll say account transaction array all trans equals and then we need to update that data grid so we'll say data grid view one dot data source equals all transactions.
So if we run, here's our account with our checking. We'll click Add Transaction. We'll say a deposit of $100. And then our description will say New Transaction. And we'll go ahead and click Add. And it doesn't work. So we have two more things that we need to implement. We need to implement the button click here on Add Transaction. And we need to actually fire off our event. So back to the designer, back to Add Transaction. So here's where we need to capture transaction details. Package up new transaction. raise transaction added event and then sit back and relax and close close this form so closing the form is easy it's this dot close no problem there um, capture transaction details so we're going to create a new transact or account transaction so we'll call this new trans equals new account transaction. And then we're going to use this inline notation of setting up the transaction. So the amount will be equal to, and we're going to say decimal dot parse txt amount dot text, comma, bank account equals underscore account, description equals txt, or I think it's actually text box one dot text. And the transaction type will be enum.parse type of transaction type. And then the value is going to be from our CBO transaction type selected value. So what this means to you and I is take the selected value dot to string, which will be the name of the enum and try to parse it into a transaction type. And then the last thing we need to do here is we need to say cast that as transaction type. So that's a very complex uh, statement set there, but it's very powerful in giving us back what we want. Um, so that will give us our transaction type. So it's basically doing the packaging and capture for us. So we're kind of doing it all in one big step. Now we need to raise our event. Now to erase our event we need to do a logic statement. We need to do an if and make sure that there actually is someone listening for this event and if there is then we raise the event. So we'll say if um, transaction added does not equal null is someone listening is basically what that says then we'll say transaction added parentheses this which is this form new transaction event args and we'll pass in the new transaction so I'll let that kind of sink in for a moment so new trans is what we just created here on line 43 through 49 so we're creating a new transaction event arg passing in that transaction so we're creating transaction event args and then the other parameter that is needed for the event is the sender which is this this being the add transaction form so if you remember what a delegate is is it's a function pointer now if our events require delegates then to raise an event you're simply calling a delegate or a function pointer so when we call transaction added this is a function pointer to form one method of add transform transaction added which takes in object sender and add transaction event args e it'll then execute this method doing what it needs to do and then the final step will be to close the form so we'll go ahead and do an f6 again uh, we have a one oh, two build errors so we'll clean those up real fast uh, semicolon here is not needed everything looks good now we'll run so here's our checking. We'll say add transaction, deposit, and we'll deposit $100. And we will say first add trans. We'll click add transaction. 
and there is our new deposit. So everything is looking good, functioning as we would have expected. We can add another transaction of withdrawal, and let's say we withdraw $50. Remember, these are positive numbers. We can do some error checking in our um, add transaction button click, but I wanted to kind of get through the logistics without getting hung up on some of the details. So this will be first trans withdrawal. All right, so those are the basic mechanics of our application. Uh, we will continue working through this application throughout the rest of our lectures, um, but we'll continue to evolve it and add additional functionality as the weeks progress.